Welcome to Greenville to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium and Bagwell Field. And you're watching the American Conference on ESPN of the day. Let's call it the Backyard Barbecue as East Carolina's Pirates host their friends from Raleigh, North Carolina State. Hello again, everyone. Along with Tom Ramsey, I'm Dave Lamont. We thank you very much for joining us. What we think is going to be one of the day's better games. And Tom, you're a QB. I know you want to have all these skilled players when you played. You had some good ones, but this game is loaded. Well, as a quarterback, you always want offense, offensive weapons, and North Carolina State has two really good ones. And Matt Days, a running back who was injured the last five games of last year, but he really showed up in the first game last week, 138 rushing yards. And then you have Jalen Sa Samuels, who plays not only receiver, he plays running back. He's a lead blocker at times. He'll even get into the wildcat formation. The only thing he doesn't do is throw the ball but East Carolina has a guy that throws the ball all over the field. And Philip Nelson had a wonderful first game for the Pirates last week. 398 yards, five touchdowns, 88% clip. And he's throwing to one of the best guys in the country. Number one in FBS career receptions, active player. It is Zay Jones, big number seven. And if he gets single coverage today, Dave, expect him to get filled up with the ball. Well, get ready for another number seven, Naheem Hines for NC State, who is back deep. One of the fastest players in college football. He's an All-American track star for the Wolfpack. Uh, I don't know if he's going to return that one. He wisely will take a knee. We'll get a touchback. And let's bring out the one-time Boise State star, Ryan Finley, the redshirt sophomore, who still has three years of eligibility left. He is the NC State quarterback, and he had a sharp debut for the Wolfpack last week. Well, and he threw it about 81% last week. Ryan Finley, of course, a transfer from Boise State. He's a graduate transfer, so he finished up his degree in three years, and he has really brought a great spark to the Wolfpack offense. He's able to distribute the ball across the field, and he can get it downfield as well. He'll have Matt Days at the tailback position. And they'll start with three receivers on the right-hand side. Crowd here is jacked. This game has been on everybody's lips in Greenville for weeks. From the empty set, Finley goes underneath. And a good catch made there at the 30, maybe the 31-yard line by Days. And that'll be second down and five to Sean Amos in that nickel back position. So they open a nickel to the Pirates. Yeah, and they really are forced to open in their nickel package because... North Carolina State is so spread out. They're in empty and the first two downs. Yeah, they put Days in the slot. Number 21. Now they bring him back into the backfield and shift. And they do a lot of pre-motion, or excuse me, pre-snap motion. Days this time on the ground. And he'll be short of the first down by three yards as we get set for third down. And, and Dave, one of the reasons they go in that pre-snap, the quick kind of up-tempo pre-snap, movement is to fool the defense and to put him in a bad position right out of the gate but Kenwick Thompson the defensive coordinator for East Carolina really on top of it knowing and studying this offense and trying not to let that happen today Finley in a lot of trouble got away from one but now he could not get away down he goes at the 18 yard line Deion Pratt the senior from Washington, D.C. with a sack, and the Wolfpack will have to punt. Loss of eight. Uh, Dayon Pratt, the outside linebacker. Actually, he's a defensive end in that 40 front that they're running right there. And Dayon Pratt just little X stunt on the outside, beats the guard and tackle, and shoots through the gap and puts the hit on Finley. Quay Johnson to the 35-yard line. Awaiting the punt from a very good one, A.J. Cole the third. This is low. And Jones is going to tell everybody to get out of the way. This is going to roll out of bounds at the 38-yard line. This is Anthony Scott gets the pitch, and he's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Bravius right among the tacklers, but it's an eight-yard pickup for the Pirates. That's a nice, nice pickup there. Nice little quick toss to Scott. One of the things they want to do, avoid that front four of North Carolina State. They're, they're awfully good up front. And a little wheel route out of the backfield. And that's going to be a first down into NC State territory. Quay Johnson, a gain of 11. And East Carolina trying to play very, very quickly. Not, not trying. They're succeeding, yeah, at least really in the early are. going. 
Yeah, Philip Nelson can distribute the ball all over the field. They're going to move and keep an up-tempo offense today, Dave. And, you know, it's really kind of keep North Carolina State back on their heels. Now, Quay Johnson that time was brought down immediately by a very good safety and number 11, Josh Jones, for the Wolfpack. So no gain there, second down and 10. And now things slow down just a little bit. Scott, the tailback, fake to him. Going to take a deep shot down the far sideline, and the catch is made, and they go inside the 10-yard line. That's Jimmy Williams. He's down at the 9, first down and goal, East Carolina, 34 yards. Well, as much attention as Zay Jones gets on the opposite side of the field, Jimmy Williams, you know he's going to be locked up one-on-one, -on -one, and Philip Nelson with a nice deep ball down the sideline. That's a nice grab by Williams. He goes up with strong hands and makes a nice catch. Now they go with a little bit of a, almost a Statue of Liberty type play, but that went absolutely nowhere as Quay Johnson was stopped for a loss of about three. Take a look at Nelson out of the end zone camera and just rifles it downfield. And it, it, we knew they were going to work on the cornerbacks early. They took a shot deep. The ball in between the 11 and 12 yard line, second down and goal coming up. And from the right hash, they've got one on one coverage on the near sideline. Nelson being flushed, and he got that pass off and saved the play. They're going to get down to the six-yard line. That was an unbelievable throw. I think that was Contavious Street who put the pressure on him, and he was able to get it off in time. And, and Dave, one of the things that East Carolina knowingly does on offense, they don't bring a lot of people in to protect against blitz. And if there's an extra man that North Carolina sends, he's going to be a hot guy that's right in the quarterback's face. It's on the quarterback and his responsibility to get rid of the ball on time. And Nelson got rid of it towards Zay Jones, but that is not going to work, so it's going to be fourth down, and the field goal unit looks like they're going to rush out there with Davis Plowman. So he started four for four, did the senior Philip Nelson, who's this is his third stop in college football. Minnesota first, a brief and unhappy stay at Rutgers, and now he's here in Greenville. Never seen more of that. A lot of guys, you know, the, the really the, uh, the nouveau uh, college football for 2016. If you're a graduate transfer, right, you got you can go anywhere. Plowman, one for two last week in the win. And one for one today. So the long pass play to Jimmy Williams sets up the 23-yard field goal by the senior Davis Plowman in East Carolina. Gets off early and often, leading 3 0. As the Wolfpack will have their second possession when we return. Well, it's a good time in Greenville when you're scoring points and your security staff and your police force dance with the cheerleaders. You don't often see that. There's Scotty Montgomery. You mentioned this his second game as a head coach, but he is far from a novice on the sidelines, Tom. He's had extensive college. He played at Duke and NFL coaching experience. Well, Jeff Comfer, the AD, but, you know, I don't think it's a stretch at all to hire a guy like Scotty Montgomery. Remember, he's replacing the beloved Ruffin McNeil, who is up at Georgia, or actually he's up at Virginia now under Bronco Mendenhall. In the meantime, Hines, we mentioned what a dangerous return man he can be. He gets a chance this time to the 36-yard line. Montgomery was in Pittsburgh. Uh, also, it talks about Bruce Arians as a, as a major mentor of his. And now they do a little reverse and a pass coming out of it and wide open. Down to the 35-yard line. They had another receiver. Gavin Locklear threw it to Stephon Lewis, but Tom, there was a receiver 10 yards past that wide open. Yeah, Braylon Cherry was completely open. Had they got him the ball, uh, he, he would have scored. But it was still a nice throw and catch. Lewis there making a nice catch on the sideline. Yeah, great throw on the run. You could see that by Locklear. And now straight ahead, basic rush play, and a good one for eight yards. Second down and two. So the Wolfpack bust out the trick play before anybody else does. And Days looks like he's going to head off and get a short rest. East Carolina making a lot of substitutions, getting some fresh bodies on the field. It's a hot day today, and you have to play a lot of guys. Make sure you're rotating eff efficiently. They go Wildcat with Jalen Samuels. He'll keep it. And Samuels disappears into the pile trying to move the change, and he doesn't do it. It'll be third down and a yard coming up. The interior of the defense led by the former safety Terrell Richardson, number 22, making the stop. 
And let's see now Finley will come back in the game and Samuels will check out. But you see Samuels in his career. That's a staggering balance. And note the 21 touchdowns in what's that 140 152 touches. Yeah, 21 touchdowns in 27 career games. That's impressive. And they go back to days and that is close. No, you know what? I'm Brett, the officials don't think it's close. They're going to mark him short and an interesting decision now for Dave Doran. Cam White, the middle linebacker on the stop. Boy, Cam White really read it well from that middle linebacker spot. You're going to see 55 fill the gap. Boom! Puts the hit on Matt Days and just takes him off his feet. There is no, dis well, there is a decision, but it's not to go for it. They're going to bring out the sophomore, Kyle Bambard, who is going to try from 45 yards out. Nope, this is a different kicker than they gave us. This is also from 45 yards out, regardless of his kicking it. The distance is there, but the accuracy is not. So they went to the longer foot with Connor Haskins, and he misses wide to the right. So a last second kicking change by the Wolfpack. And East Carolina will have the football back at their own 27. Well, these teams have not played that often in recent years and there's a good reason why something that happened in Raleigh late pressure but wide open as a receiver and that is Summers James Summers who is a quarterback he is a running back he is a receiver he is to the Pirates what Jalen Samuels is to NC State a beautiful throw by Nelson under pressure and it's a first down for the Pirates after a 39-yard gain well Dave what opened it up Zay Jones went right to the post and Summers just ran a wheel route, and that's a great throw again by Philip Nelson. This time, Quay Johnson out of the flat, and he'll be brought down immediately. No game. They've run that play a few times. You know, I like to, uh, in talking to Scotty Montgomery yesterday, he's very in tune with his quarterbacks. And Philip Nelson, when he showed up on campus, he immediately got to rooming with Zay Jones, the top pass catcher in the country. Not, not bad. So far today, five of six, 90 yards for Nelson. That was a good tackle by one of the captains for the Wolfpack, Jeff T Jack Tocho, in the open field. And right now, Nelson's going to fake. They draw him in for the screen pass. This is well set up. Anthony Scott's got room. He'll get inside the 30-yard line. He'll be just a couple of yards shy of the first down. So that sets up a third and very manageable distance for the ECU offense. Nice call there with a the screen and Tony Peterson, the offensive coordinator. One of the things he wanted to do was tire out that defensive line. How do you do it? You move the pocket, you move the quarterback, you run screens, you one run waggle, run some boot. Right there, a nicely executed screen. Now Summers is in at that quarterback position. He'll keep it. Run into his own man, bounce off of that and break free to the 20. Summers, he'll score! Touchdown, Pirates! Seven yards for James Summers, who ran for 95 last week against Western Carolina. Pretty explosive guy out of the Wildcat. It, you know, defensive coordinators just don't account for that quarterback as a runner. And you saw right there, James Summers, his athleticism, his tenacity, <laughs> off the charts, boy. He found the he found the end zone quickly. Four plays, 73 yards in a minute and 43. Nelson three for three on that drive for 51 yards. It began with a long pass to Summers. It ends by a long run to Summers. And you know what? That penalty just cost him a point. That's right. That kick wasn't even close. The pressure came in from the kicker's right side from Josh Jones, and that may have forced a rushed and hooked kick. So that 10-yard penalty also cost Scotty Montgomery's team a point with 5.39 remaining in this opening quarter. So we'll wonder how that missed extra point will matter as this afternoon goes on. That kick is also, boy, the kicking game back-to-back -back major mistakes that time.
right, here's an offense that rang up a lot of yards a week ago, 521 yards, and they've been held to 36 yards so far today. The last being of the tailback, he gets a fake. They throw out in the flat catch made by Naheem Hines, and he can't make too many miss. He is fighting through tacklers. I'll tell you what, they had, they had him at the 40-yard line and could not get him down. He gets it instead out to the 43-yard line. He'll be too shy of the first down. What a great play. Really good play. Nice, nice pattern read and they got right to the ball they're getting multiple helmets to the football so ECU is really playing aggressive style defense right now back into the tailback spot is Matt Days who has is the number one all-time yards per carry average in North Carolina State at 5.66 he motions out and they give to Hines and Hines be careful he is fast and if he had broken that tackle, it would have been an interesting race. He gets to the 43-yard line in the ECU territory. Corey Sargent may have saved a touchdown. And Naheem Hines almost fumbled the ball on the exchange between he and Ryan Finley, Dave. The ball was hanging almost, almost off the back of his pads. I don't know how Finley stayed with it. The ball didn't hit the ground. Deshaun Benton, number six, comes in at the safety position, and the rest of the Pirates defense does a good job. A short gain there of a yard, second and nine. And Giannis Bowden, number 10, who had a very good game last week for the Pirates, in there on the stop. Yeah, also Dimitri McGill, the nose tackle, really kind of locked up on the center. Joe Selfo and kind of rode him all the way down the line of scrimmage, and they just he just brought a cast of Pirates with him and really gang tackled Matt Days there. Days motions out, Samuels, I should say, motions out. They go the other way with Days, and a great open field tackle by Richardson at the 25-yard line. That's just a two-yard pickup, and it was third down and seven. So they looked at Samuels, but Richardson was not fooled. Now, East Carolina runs a lot of man coverage, Dave, so what they get, they're trying to run slow screen here. Watch, you end up watching the middle linebacker. He just goes right with Matt Days. He folds right in behind the... The blockers, they never even saw him, and that's a great play by Terrell Richardson. The we'll pack go for two on third down. They rush four. Finley pats it once, throws. No chance there. Trying to get it into Lewis, and he was blanketed by Corey Sargent, who may be East Carolina's best cover corner, and it's going to be fourth down and seven, and the Wolfpack will trot out the field goal unit again. Good coverage that time. They uh, doing a nice job. Really making it difficult on Ryan Finley. Connor Haskins missed the first one wide to the right. This one will be 43. Low snap, handled well. And again, you can tell by the student section. You don't even have to look at the officials. The students will tell you that he missed that one. It's a raucous atmosphere at Dowdy Ficklin for the home team up by nine. Now they'll try this again with Johnson. East Carolina has run this play several times, but the Wolfpack have yet to be fooled by it. And they get it again for no gain. And really well read that time by Clark. That's just almost like a dive play these days in college football, those yeah. long passes. Yeah, it really is. Going to go underneath, and boy, I don't know how that pass got in there past the defender. Caught by Quay Johnson. Arius Moore, a very good linebacker, all over him. It'll be third down and four. And, and here's what they've been able to do, Dave. They've been in spread offense for the majority of the snaps, with the exception of the fourth down play with... James Summers, but they know they're getting man coverage on the outside, and that allows Philip Nelson to roll one side or the other and make a pretty simple throw and catch, and they're getting up the field. Under 30 seconds in this opening quarter. Pressure here. Nelson off the back foot, finds the open man into Wolfpack territory. Goes Zay Jones, first down, as he has run out of bounds to stop the clock with 18 seconds remaining in the quarter and a gain of 17. So what do you do against man coverage? You run crossing routes right there. Zay Jones getting all the way across the formation. The ball delivered on time. Gives him a chance to not only get the first down, but get yards after catch. They got Jones one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to go the other way, and that pass is 
broken up by the offensive player. It was yeah. Jimmy Williams who broke up the interception. It looked like Jack Tocho had an angle on that ball way better than Williams did. That is the end of the quarter. And right now, East Carolina just a little bit better than NC State. The Wolfpack have missed two field goals, and the Pirates have the touchdown run by James Summers. They're fired up at Greenville as the game from Raleigh has headed east, and right now it's the Pirates up after one by nine. We start the second quarter in Greenville with Tom Ramsey, Dave Lamont, and our ESPN crew. And the numbers on the time say good for the Wolfpack, but the yardage not even close. 171 to 60 for East Carolina. They've run six more plays at a much faster tempo than the Wolfpack. Yeah, North Carolina State there. Two drives ending in Connor Haskins missed field goals, two of them. So if they get the ball back, they got to they put a nice drive together. Ninth play of this drive coming up. Will they get that six, the race to the sideline? No. They'll be a couple of yards short. Zay Jones on a crossing route, and that time it was well covered. Previous right, number eight in there. Now it's fourth down, and they need two. Here's Davis Plowman. He is one for one today. Two for three on the year. His longest 42, so this will be a season-long run. Tell you what, I'm using the student section as my marker, and they all put their hands up, so it's good. The cannon goes off, and East Carolina builds their lead. 12-0 East Carolina over the Wolfpack in Greenville. Snap spot kick on the mark. Russell Wilson was the quarterback that day for the Wolfpack. He had three TD passes. That one uh, won very late in regulation. And then Andre Brown with the winner in overtime. The Wolfpack won that one 30 to 24. NC State leads 16 to 12 in the all-time history. They used to play it every year. Only six meetings since 2004. But NC State has improved their non-conference schedule this year. Look out, Hines has got some room to work here now. To the 25-yard line, the Pirates contain him with some good speed. Jalen Samuels back in, and motion goes Hines. And from the Wildcat, Samuels fakes it to Hines, and he'll get to the 42-yard line. That's a three-yard pickup, second down and seven. Samuels causes a lot of problems for defense. 5'11", 200. 23, 25 pounds, let's call him. But super explosive, fast, and he's deceptive, right? He can line up inside, lines up outside. Right now he's in the slot. And Finley up back top. in a quarterback. Yep. Gillespie is the tailback number four. Sophomore from High Point, North Carolina. He'll get it. And he's hit immediately and just dumped by Mike Myers and by De Deion Pratt. And they lost a yard there, Tom. It'll be third down and eight. Now, they haven't found a way to block Dan Pratt yet. He came off the edge again, making the hit in the backfield. So third down, and you have third and eight. So you really got to get dialed into your play calling, but you got to get a big chunk of yards here. Go out of three, the Wolfpack so far on third down. High and a great catch in the Pirates territory. A fabulous catch that time by Jalen Samuels at 5'11. He's skied to get a 14 yard catch and a first down with the Wolfpack. And that time, East Carolina going zone that time. And Finley making a nice throw to Samuels. That was a nice catch, too, because Simmons, a free safety, was right on top of the play. First third down conversion, you see Samuels, the three total touchdowns. He is a, a money player. And inside the 20-yard line, he is the main man for the Wolfpack. Right now from the 45, they run a little reverse, get a block from Finley. To the 40 goes Samuels, and he's dumped at the 38-39 yard line. Taken down by number 26, Colby Gore, a freshman, getting some activity. That's going to be, also will call it a seven-yard game. Boy, Samuels, you know, he's on one side of the field. He's running in reverse all the way to the other. I, I think if you're the coaching staff, you gotta, you got to really limit the amount of times you, you give him touches in the first half. I mean, it's a hot day today. 90 plus. Yeah, yeah 90 plus. Humidity's up. I mean, he, he's going to get drained eventually. 
He'll block this time, and a handoff to Gillespie, and he'll break to the 30, 25, 20. Gillespie lowers his shoulder, still goes. Touchdown, NC State. What a run. That, that's, that's when you say, Dave, the runner is not going to be denied. He takes a little inside zone handoff from Finley, the quarterback, Gillespie. Wham! He takes care of business. Not one, but two guys run through the last tackle. That's a good piece of running and a real, real shot. Good shot in the arm for North Carolina State. So a 37-yard run by the sophomore, Reggie Gillespie, the second, caps off seven plays, 74 yards in 345. A shoulder lowerer. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Still ahead. And the odd number there, by the way, was a missed extra point. They actually had a point taken off the board. There was a holding penalty on the PAT, and they lost the extra point when it was missed on the second try. And Quay Johnson has dumped it around the 14-yard line. Excellent special teams coverage that time. Freddie Phillips in there on the stop. And so now the Pirates in their first little bath of adversity with uh, Philip Nelson and his offense. So we get ready to see if East Carolina can come and handle their problems. I'm Dave Lamont, Tom Ramsey by my side, and our ESPN crew here in hot, sunny Greenville. Temperature is going to be over 90 degrees by halftime, and we're getting close to that already. Uh, no threat of rain, thankfully. This area saw enough of that. They had rain here last week, the end of uh, her mine. Uh, and they certainly have wanted to dry out, and they are. And this is an interesting little battle. As that pass is picked off. Trying to force it into Jones in the one-on-one -on -one coverage. The catch is made by Jack Tocho, and it's going to be the first turnover of the ball game by the Pirates. No, Tocho's a veteran presence out at corner. He's not the fastest defensive back in the backfield, but he was matched up one-on-one -on -one with Zay Jones, and that's just going to the well too many times. They wanted to get the ball to Zay Jones. I don't blame him, but he draws a crowd that time. Tocho right on the ball, ends up getting his head turned, making a nice catch and interception. Well, that was, it almost looked as if Jones was the defender that time, and that's yeah. the second time we've seen that. So now... I was about to say these two schools have a history of dislike between Raleigh and Greenville and it's a tremendous turnaround here the Gillespie run and now the turnover CL Ryan Finley the former Boise Stater at quarterback we haven't seen Jalen McClendon yet for the Wolfpack dumps it off there's Hines he's open and Hines will be knocked out of bounds at a first down level he'll gain 12 and it's a first down. Amos pushed him out. Well, and you know, early in the season, Dave, you don't know how teams respond to adversity right there. That was East Carolina's first turnover of the season, first interception for Philip Nelson. And you see how quickly North Carolina State responds. They go right after it and get the ball into their playmaker, Hines' hands. Finley, 51 yards, 6 of 7 on the afternoon. Days is the tailback. He'll stay in and block very effectively as they go deep down the middle of the field toward the end zone, and it's broken up. They were trying to get it to Maurice Trowell. And make that number three, Calvin Harmon. Bottom line is it is still incomplete. Yeah, Harmon, the true freshman out of New Jersey. And, and I thought Harmon did a great job in breaking up the play. The ball was a little underthrown, and he goes up, and he becomes the defender and knocks the ball away, so it's, the pass is not intercepted. Now, that was number eight. These threes and eights look alike. Anyway, bottom line, second down and ten. Out of Charlotte. Good pocket that time, trying to get a touch pass to Lewis. What a beautiful play. A perfect throw and an over-the-shoulder grab by Stephon Lewis. And the West Palm native gets 34 yards and a first down. Th this is just a beautiful throw and catch, and... and Ryan Finley realizes that Lewis has a step on the defender and he lays it in just remarkably. And now they're in inside the 10 yard line. They're in Jalen Samuels territory, but he leads the blocking for Dave's. He gets to the five. It'll be second down and goal from there. Boy, that was a nice throw. Yeah, it really was. Really was. Days with two rushing touchdowns a week ago. Not that they'll get conservative inside the plus territory because they'll. 
likely to throw it here too but you know as the field condenses you really got to get the ball into your go-to guys and of course Jalen Samuels and Matt Days are the two guys you want touching the football and they'll go under center here And the handoff to Samuels on the sweep. He'll roll right in. Well, another well-executed play and perfectly blocked. And Samuels in the red zone, not surprisingly. And the Wolfpack, for the first time today, has the lead. Nice little jet sweep. Nice wrinkle that time by North Carolina State. They just handed him the ball, and he made it look awfully easy getting around in. And the extra point is rejected. This, well, it's been a tough day for kickers. So we've... Good. Yep, she, Time out. So they went for two. Rejected indeed. I don't know if you want to chase points this early in the game. No, they end up throwing a, a ball out to the receiver who just flat out drops it. I believe Clark Ayers. Yeah, it was Ayers. Yeah, and he dropped it. It was still a live ball because it was a lateral. Either way, they missed it. But look at Samuels in the red zone. That is absolutely incredible that better than half the time he touches the ball in the red zone, he's in the end of the zone. Yeah. <laughs> it's impressive. It is really impressive. He, uh, he's your money maker. Way Johnson in between the S and the T in East Carolina will take a knee and the ball will go out to the 25 yard line. Little pitch out here. Scott fumble and it went out of bounds. What well, a big break there. You imagine the complete deflation of this stadium and Scott's a bit shaken up. He got hit hard right on where the football is and he goes directly to the bench to be examined by a trainer. Boy, he did get yeah. rocked right there. Sean Boone coming from the strong safety position really just brought the hammer that time and the ball squirted out of Scott's hands, but it went out of bounds. The ball was brought back to the spot of the fumble. It's a four-yard gain of the 29-yard line. They go to the reserve running back, Devin Anderson, and Anderson breaks free. Anderson to midfield, into Wolfpack territory, and then around the 44-yard line, and that gets this Greenville crowd jacked up again. Josh Jones on the stop. Boy, that's just a little inside zone to Devin Anderson and young guy. That is the longest career run for Anderson. Now they go with Summers at the Wildcat, and this time the middle of that Wolfpack defense. We talked about how that is the strength of this team. You saw Justin Jones, number 27, and do we hear his name a lot when we talked to the Pirates coaching staff yesterday? Boy, they had a lot of respect for that interior line, and Justin Jones, you know, 6'2", 300 pounder out of Georgia you know he's only a 455 bench and a 600 squat but look at how good North Carolina State's defense has improved under Dave Doran last year only giving up 350 yards a game Anthony Scott number three is back in so it's Philip Nelson the quarterback he'll pitch it a little bit behind the receiver to catch made at the 25 yard line that's Jimmy Williams who we are told has an extremely promising future. He is a senior, but they think by the end of the year he's going to be as good or close to as good as Zay Jones is. Yeah, and Zay Jones is awfully, he's awfully good. He draws a lot of attention. In this quarter, the Pirates are 0 for 2 on third down. They have to go in 10 for 14 last week against a little bit of a lesser opponent than NC State. Anthony Scott, the wheel route into the backfield. He'll walk in. Touchdown, ECU. They take the lead back. Looking at the big scoreboard, Tom, you didn't see a Wolfpack defender anywhere on that big scoreboard that showed the replay of the touchdown. No, nope, they had the right play dialed up that time. Tony Peterson, the offensive coordinator, knowing North Carolina State was going to be in man coverage, and then they just busted the coverage. They never got a man out to cover Anthony Scott, and Nelson makes a nice throw. No touchdown. PAT, Tom. I'm sorry to interrupt. No PAT is conventional right now, so we have to stay with everything at this point. Right. <laughs> 1913 after a routine PAT by Plowman. Now take a look. You got Scott on the wheel route. No one goes with him. Pirates go ahead in the game, 1913. Been a fun afternoon so far in Greenville, Tom, as East Carolina has regained the lead. 
Well, they do a nice job on third third down here. You got Zay Jones is going to run inside. Then Anthony Scott is going to run a wheel route, and the ball is thrown perfectly from Phil Nelson. And, of course, one of the reasons it's thrown perfectly, no one was guarding Anthony Scott. They just busted the coverage that time, did North Carolina State's defense, and they just uh, they'll go back and look at that one on film and go, man, you know, they, they had us. They had one drawn up against us, and uh, they converted. Pirates up. 19-13. This is Naheem Hines interrupting the Bon Jovi sing-along for a kickoff return that gets down to the 20-yard line. The last piece still the tailback. He had a great touchdown run for the Wolfpack earlier. Finley has all time to survey the field, and Lewis is loose, and he'll make the grab at the 45 and break free. Lewis to the 20. One man with a chance to beat him. He can't do it. Touchdown, NC State, 80 yards. Well, you see the explosiveness of the North Carolina State offense and the accuracy of Ryan Finley just getting a huge chunk. Stephon Lewis making a great grab down the sideline and then puts on the Jets and gets in past the defenders. What was it I just said a minute ago that East Carolina has retaken the lead and they don't have it anymore? Oh, well, we've actually had a conventional PAT by NC State to take the lead back, not chasing the points. And you see Finley's numbers, 8 of 10, 165. So that is the end of the first half. East Carolina will get the ball to receive the second half kickoff. We'll step aside here and get you set for the studio. The guys will take over right now. From Greenville and Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, Bagwell Field, uh, you are watching the American Conference on ESPN. And a back and forth first half for the Wolfpack from the ACC leading the Americans, East Carolina, 20 to 19 here in Greenville. With Tom Ramsey, I'm Dave Lamont. A tremendous first half, Tom. We saw a lot of skilled players coming through big. Both quarterbacks had their great moments. But East Carolina's having a problem trying to get to Ryan Finley. How do they do it? Yeah, Ryan Finley, 9 of 12 in the first half, 168 yards, touchdown. He's looking awfully good, but you got to start putting pressure on him. you got to bring people off the edge. And one of the guys I think they really have to dial in, East Carolina does, is get Dayon Pratt free and have him put some pressure on to Finley. And speaking of Pratt, take a look at him. When he comes, he comes really hard, Dave. And coming off the edge at that DN position, he's a stand-up outside linebacker as well, but he's so effective it disrupting another team's offense right there in the backfield once again of now, North Carolina State. And then on the flip side, you know, what does North Carolina State need to do more of? How about Jalen Samuels? Because every time he touches the ball, especially in the red zone, he's such a dynamic player and has the ability to score. As Couple. he does right there on a play that the Wolfpack made look very easy at one point. The Pirates had a 12-0 lead in this game, but they run 11 more plays, but NC State with more yards. Of course, they have an 80-yard pitch and catch touchdown to help that up to nine yards per play. Third downs, nothing like what those teams did last week. Of course, the competition is tougher this week. And field goal, man, NC State's missed two. East Carolina, two out of three. They even had two chances right at the end of the half from 45 and then 40 yards and could not convert on either of those. So, And we also have a missed extra point by East Carolina, and that is sitting as the difference in our game. Well, we've also had an ejection in this game. Thrown out for targeting was Pirates safety Bobby Fulp. Pirates will get the football first. Pirates into purple. This is a shorter kick than we've seen normally. It'll be Johnson, the one yard line. And Matty Moden gets the 20. Wolfpack covers that kick extremely well. And off to Scott, number three, and get back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. I think Arius Moore among in the, the Wolfpack defenders, number 58, a very good outside linebacker for this defense of Dave Huxtables. Yeah, Dave Huxtables had a nice uh, game call so far. You know, and as long as you pin these guys back, you, you know, the Pirates are an explosive team, but they need room to operate. They've had two good long runs of 28 and 27 yards. Scott takes off here, and he's going to be stopped. I think Moore was in there again at around the 
14 yard line. But explosive pass plays. They've had a 33 yarder to Jimmy Williams and a 25 yarder with Anthony Scott. And that was the touchdown where Scott was wide open. So here's a third and five and four out of 12 on third downs. East Carolina. And, that's, and then Scott had the other one where he was wide open. He dropped the ball. That was a touchdown. Wow. We've had so many close calls of touchdowns. NC State dropped an interception. It would have been a touchdown. Nelson steps into the threat throw. It's a bit of a wobbler. Comes out right around the marker. Scott, the ball comes out loose. It's still loose. And it should belong to the Wolfpack. It does. That ball got jarred out, and I mean, Contavia Street, they rush four again. Short route underneath, and and all of a sudden, Hill also with the hit jars right. the ball out. Street with the fumble recovery, boy, he gets hit. Watch, watch B.J. Hill. He came in last and just knocked the ball out. He has a hundred pound advantage on Scott in weight. Oh, yeah. You know what I like about their D-line, Dave? Their motors run. Yep. I mean, they are high motor guys. They're big, big, strong, powerful people. So a crisis here for the Pirates and a great opportunity for the Wolfpack. They're in the red zone, and number one is in the game, Samuels. He'll get the football here, and everybody in the building seemed to know it. He was chased out of bounds pretty quickly by Keontae Anderson, a junior from right here in Greenville. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. East Carolina's in great shape. They're in great football shape. They're running fast to the football, and I think that's what's catching State off guard a little bit. I, they're running so well with the ball, and, and they're diagnosing the play, and they're not fooled by formation. Go to the other side this time and try Matt Days, and Days gets cut down at the 13 yard line by Deshaun Amos, the nickelback. Sets up third down and four. That's a really nice play by Deshaun Amos, who's a he's a graduate student, got his degree in management, came back for a, a fifth year under coach Scotty Montgomery. And you know, on his first it was freshman year. He had an interception for 100 yards, so he's a he's a fast track man as well. About a 4-3-8, 40-yard dash. Take a look at Bob number 10, kind of peeking in there. Is he going to come in and attack the quarterback or not? He's going to stay in coverage. Finley over the middle, low throw, incomplete. Threw a little bit behind the receiver at the five-yard line. Would have been a first down if he and uh, Trowell would have been able to connect. And instead, here comes the field goal unit, and man, you just do not know what to expect when these teams trot out their field goal units today. Now he had Maurice Trowell. He had he had an open man. The ball just didn't come out real clean, and and the ball goes incomplete. That was a wonderful opportunity for a first down inside the ten. So Bambard, who was in when they tried to fake, and I bet you AJ Cole doesn't do that again. I'm, I'm going to call for a kick here. And a make. And the Wolfpack pads their lead to 23 to 19. They turn the mistake into three points. Oh, there's Dave Doran. He was part of uh, that nice little run that Northern Illinois is still on under Rod Carey, but it began with Jerry Kill, then Dave Doran. It took him to the Orange Bowl, for heaven's sakes. Left. Rod Carey's first game was the Orange Bowl. And then Rod is still there, winning division titles seemingly every year in the West. Johnson again, and it'll get out of bounds, and there's the flag. It didn't get out of bounds before it crossed the pylon, so it'll be the penalty to the 35-yard line. Lift to his right. No throw and a catch made into midfield, and that is Jimmy Williams for the first down for the Pirates. Now, and I think this is what ECU is going to have to do, Dave. They're going to have to continue to spread out the defense of North Carolina State. So when the receiver caught the ball, his knee was down. That's why they marked it at the point of where he caught the ball. Third down, and let's call it, let's call it four. Well, that's what you get for the low throw. Yep.
Pressure coming from the edge. Nelson hangs in, throws wide open Williams into NC State territory, and that is a clear-cut first down. No disputing that one. You know, I like the formation again. They put Zay Jones, he was up top, and then they put three wide receivers to the other side. Zay Jones is still getting a lot of attention, but these receivers are in great shape. They can run all day, and as long as they keep North Carolina State spread out, they got a chance. Nelson, 212 yards, 24 for 34, 25 of 35, and some yardage down the sideline goes Quay Johnson. He'll have a first down to the 34-yard line, and the Pirates on the move smartly here under six minutes to go in this third quarter. You know, I think we go back to what Scotty Montgomery said. You know, he wanted to play with tempo, right? And, and when they get rolling, they can throw it into a higher gear, and that's exactly what Philip Nelson's doing. And they do it again with Johnson. He gets one block off the tight end. Baggett, number 86, did a nice job that time in space. That's a five-yard pickup, and it'll be second down and five. I like the other thing that Scotty Montgomery said to us yesterday, Dave. He was talking about details and communication, and not only players or coaches to players, but coaches to coaches, right, along their sideline. It's, as long as everything's going well, they get a good chance. They pitch it the other way. Got some good blockers down there. For number seven, Zay Jones. He hasn't caught a ton of passes, but he has an impact there on that little pitch to the 15-yard line and a first down. Love the play call. They put it in the hands of James Summers. It was a direct snap to him, and then he takes off to the right. They want to run a quick reverse to Zay Jones, and you see his great athleticism. Yeah. Summers will keep it. Running to the right, gets a key block. He'll get inside the 10, inside the 5, and inside the end zone! that partner just go ahead and carry seven or eight guys in with you well don't quarterbacks always do that when they run man I'm telling you now he runs that's Arius Moore number 58 he's dragging five yards into the end zone with a word and I have never heard man. a quarterback's running ability referred to before as violent and that was the word that was used by Tony Peterson the offensive coordinator for East Carolina and they talked about summer's running style this is violent right here. Yeah, this is this is aggressive. This is uh, <laughs> that's effective. Well, the man of the hour, at least for the moment, is James Summers, the senior from Greensboro, with an unbelievable run, his second rushing touchdown. You see the seventh play, 65 yards, and a tick over three minutes. A 15-yard run by Summers, and you talk about a team that needed to flush out some bad vibes. The Pirates' last four drives prior to that time, a punt, a field goal miss, a fumble, and another punt. That's a great response. Coming up is Naheem Hines at the five-yard line. Remember, he is an ACC sprinter, and he is still going. We have a flag down, and we had a helmet come off. And if that player continued to participate, there will be a penalty on NC State. Yeah, that's a key defender out of the game for, for ECU. Gillespie bounces it when he didn't have a hole. He makes one up, and down the sideline he goes for each shoulder out of bounds by Deshaun Benton, number six, but a nice first down run by Gillespie, who's been a valuable substitute off the bench. Yeah, I like how Reggie Gillespie ha has been running, gets his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, and really has a nice burst at the sideline. And, you know, it, it, as hot as it's, it's been today, Dave, you got to rotate those backs. They've done a nice job. Three carries, 55 yards. His fourth carry will pick up three. Second down at seven. Under three minutes in this third quarter, NC State trailing in this one. We've had a bunch of lead changes. At one point, East Carolina had a 12-0 lead. NC State roared back to go ahead 13-12, and they've been exchanging the lead ever since in that second quarter. Yeah, I think this is a crucial drive for State, too. they got to get some points on the board here with 2.30 left in the third quarter. A lot of times running off the clock in the second half as they well. bring pressure from the edge. And NC State runs away from that, but not a lot there. So here's a very big third down and four coming up. And third downs, neither team has been very good at it. NC State is one out of seven, Tom, today. 
107 is just not going to cut it. And, it, you know, last week they were 10 of 15. So this becomes a very crucial third down conversion for the Wolfpack. Samuels right there in the slot again. They throw to him, and he has the first down. He got bumped coming off the line by Simmons, and it didn't bother him one bit. No, he's a strong dude, and, and when they tried to chuck him, I mean, he just he just runs right through that that would be chuck, and he, that's a great release of a receiver down the field. Finley knows it. He stays with his receiver, gets him the ball on time, and they got a first down to the 45-yard line of the Pirates. The Pirates walking up a lot of defenders. And Finley on the zone read keeps and he is brought down for a loss immediately by Keontae Anderson, number 96. Second down and long coming up. And Keontae Anderson stepping in for Deion Pratt. That's a nice play by him. All right, local boy. 6'4, 252 pound linebacker. I just like their linebackers. I think they run well. They're, they're big dudes, they're hard to block. And uh, they freed themselves up today. Under a minute in this third quarter. Bringing more pressure, but it's blocked. Finley has time, delivers, and a, what a fine catch by Naheem Hines at the 38-yard line. He was blanketed by Colby Gore, and he managed to use his body as a shield to make that grab a gain of seven. Yep, that's so here's a great third point. and four coming up here. Yep, great point. He did really had great body position that time. So again, another crucial third down. Just show me where Jalen Samuels is. We have a timeout being waved in by the, uh, an official, and are we getting a sideline warning here? Sideline warning charged to NC State. And a couple of coaches who had come out on the field a, a few steps uh, in the last couple of years This has been something the officials are trying to crack down on I mean you'd have some coordinators calling plays and they'd be ten yards on the field Communicating with a quarterback or with a defender yeah. So that's what stopped the clock and the clock now is picked up and it runs out So they're gonna raise the blood red flag here in Greenville to get this crowd even more jacked up if you could imagine them being any more jacked up Particularly when they can get a great touchdown run from Summers like this to get them going in Greenville. 26 23, ECU with one to go. Very appropriate that East Carolina has had the odd quarters in their favor. NC State, the one even quarter went their way. They took the lead at the half. East Carolina has the lead after three. What an atmosphere in Greenville. And the attendance. Could be very close to a record here. Third down, Finley will keep it, and he'll get the first down, finding the seam he needed to get to the 33-yard line. And the attendance today, hit me, 50,719, second highest in school history. Primarily purple and gold. In fact, they tried to set it up. There were one section would be purple, one would be gold. There's a few Wolfpack fans who spoiled that. <laughs> that was some red in yeah, there. We're hanging about right up there somewhere, yep. right? But they did a nice job getting the word out to their fans. Communication. They heard Montgomery talk. He used that word about a dozen times yesterday. Hines in motion. Finley. Going over the top, into coverage, broken up, incomplete. Tried to get it to Jalen Samuels, and he took a pop. He did take a pop. What was nice about that play by Benton is that it was clean. Yeah. No even yeah. a thought of a targeting flag there. We've already had one. In fact, Benton is in the game because of it. He's backing up Bobby Fulp, who was ejected in the first half. And, and it's because Benton played the ball and not the man. Yep. Yeah, that ball was still in doubt until... All doubt was removed. Days at the tailback spot. Gets the carry. Finds a little seam. Days at the 20-yard line. And it'll be first down NC State. Sergeant may have saved six with the tackle. Well, the right tackle that time, Will Richardson did a great job on his man. And they just run outside zone, Dave. And boy, Matt Days is he seems fresh right now in the fourth quarter. And that's when you need those guys. There's a good look at Richardson, one of their best blockers up front. 95 yards for days on just 12 carries. His 13th carry. 
And he'll be at 99 yards. You know, th this game has gone back and forth, and, and there's a lot of physicalness up front. One of the things that North Carolina State wanted to do, they knew they wanted to wear out that interior of East Carolina, and it, it's surprising, or actually not surprising to me now, that they're really trying to work that interior line of scrimmage and running some inside zone. And Finley keeps it. He'll score! Perfect zone read by Ryan Finley. And the Wolfpack is back in front. Well, they picked up on something. The linebackers were going off the first fake. And I thought the third down call a moment ago when Finley kept it, got the first down, and then the zone read right there for the score. That's just great football right there. Finley does a great job. He reads it. The end collapses, and he gets in for the score. PAT is not automatic today. <laughs> no. But this one looms large. 30 to 26. 12 plays. 90 yards in exactly six minutes. So you wouldn't think Ryan Finley's a running quarterback. You'd think incorrectly. Now that is a fourth quarter tradition. That blood red no quarter flag replacing the black Jolly Roger flag. And in pirate culture, no mercy. And the Pirates will take no prisoners, or in pirate parlance, give no quarter. Well, we're going to really be interested to see who comes out and plays quarterback on this next series for East Carolina. Uh, Philip Nelson is getting some medical attention during our break. Wade Johnson will take this from a yard out of the end zone. He needs blockers, and NC State has covered his returns extremely well. And Nelson is back in a quarterback. They actually had their third stringer, Gardner Minshew, the second warming up on the sidelines, but they're going to go with Nelson. Three receivers to his left. And they empty it. He'll throw, and Zay Jones with a diving grab, and that'll be a first down to the Pirates at the 27-yard line. A great grab by Zay Jones. His father, Robert, the first All-American to play at ECU and go on with the Dallas Cowboys. Three Super Bowl championship teams, so Zay Jones comes from awfully good stock. And Nelson had the time. Jones with six catches, 58 yards. A delayed handoff, and look out. You almost lost a running back that time. That play destroyed. Darian Roseboro, the sophomore from Lincoln to North Carolina. Listen in. Boy, no one touched him. No one got a hat on him. He came hard off the edge. Today, North Carolina State, 10 tackles for loss. They go empty set again. Quick throw over the middle. Nicely done. Sitting down in that zone is Quay Johnson. He'll get a first down into Wolfpack territory around the 46-45 yard line. Josh Jones on the stop. Nelson is getting time to throw right now, Tom, and he's having his choice of receivers. Yeah, and I like Quay Johnson. In my film study this week, I wrote down, here's a great route runner, and right then he delivered the goods to Nelson. And now Nelson is under pressure for the first time on this drive, and he'll just eat it, basically. I think he got back to the line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard. They're going to mark him out at the 46, so he did lose a yard. Second down and 11. Moore putting on the pressure. Boy, he got, he, he didn't have much of a hitch in his giddy up there. He got outside and ran pretty good. Now, he was hit, being looked at by the trainers. He's four for four passing on this drive right before this drive began. Under 10 minutes in our game. They'll go to the ground. This is Devin Anderson. Devin Anderson gets to the 41 yard line with some extra effort. That's going to be a gain of five. Here comes third down and six. Uh, Josh Jones again coming from his free safety position. He's able to drop down in and provide some run support there. And I, I thought that was a nice tackle. He came up real fast and it puts ECU in a long third down, third and six. But we know they'll go for it on fourth. They did it early in the game in their own territory. So if they do anything decent here but don't get a first down, will they go for it? They need more than a field goal. Once again, Anderson checks out. Nelson is empty in the backfield. Fires Jones. First down and a little extra. 
Well, he's coming on now in this quarter. You're going to your best receiver, Zay Jones, and he gets to the 26-yard line. And, and one of the things Scotty Montgomery said about Zay Jones, he can run all day. I mean, all you wouldn't know it's 90 degrees and 90% humidity. You'd think it was, you know, 75 degrees. You're down jogging well, at the he's beach. From Austin, Texas. It gets a tad toasty down there in Longhorn Country, as you know. Yeah. To the ground. To the 20. Anderson. And he is shoved out of bounds by Josh Jones for a first down, however. Let's see the officials mark him out at the 12-yard line. And the Pirates are ripping off big chunks of yards now. And you got to love it. Zay Jones, watch his blocking ability down the field, and he gets the key block. And Devin Anderson gets right around him to move the sticks ahead for the Pirates. Right. He'll hand it off. Scott gets to the five. The other thing East Carolina is doing is they're going more slowly, Tom. Yeah. They've been chewing up clock on this drive. Yeah, they've done a nice job. Really managed the clock well today. You know, when they when they got on a roll early in that third quarter, they kept the kind of kept the pedal to the metal and ran some quick plays and put North Carolina State back on their heels. And then you're right, down in the red zone, they're taking a much more time and uh, being very deliberate with their play calls. 14th play of the drive coming up. It's Scott again. It's Scott in the end zone. Touchdown, ECU. Well, I, I like the blocking up front. Christian Matau ends up getting a nice block. And Brandon Smith, yeah, had a real nice block, too, from right tackle. He did a great job. You don't sleep on PATs in this game today. And now we have a three-point margin, so NC State could tie this thing up with a field goal. 5.49 to go. Well, you just see ECU making it a great game. 14 plays, 84 yards, 7 minutes and 15 seconds used off the clock. And our Taco Bell game track shows that East Carolina has the lead. Ryan Finley, a solid day. Steven Lewis, one big 80-yard catch. And Philip Nelson, 32 of 42. I know that's not 80-some-odd percent. It's still pretty good. 291 with a TD and a pick. Yeah, he's opened it up in the second half. He threw for 168 in the first half, but he's had a nice second half. They've run a lot of spread and really kept the ball away from that interior of the Wolfpack. Now, this is a funky little kickoff, and it's misplayed by Hines, and he gets it at the five-yard line. That ball had a weird spin on it, and down he goes at the three. Devarius Brunson dragged him down at the three-yard line. Let's see if the officials mark him at the four. Looks like they're going to give him a, an extra yard there. Well, uh, it really a, a, a terrible mistake. Naheem Hines doesn't field the ball well. It's an errant catch, and then all of a sudden, great coverage unit gets him down inside the five. You see where he tried to catch the ball above his shoulder pads, and that kick caught him off they, guard, Tom. He, he yeah. started sprinting toward that thing. Yeah, well, Dave, here, here all of a sudden, you got 541 left, and you got three timeouts. You need a field goal to tie, and, it, you know, the clock runs awfully quick, so you got to keep an eye on it because you have no guarantee of getting the ball back. Tunnel screen swatted down. Justin Brown, number 69, got a hand up. Second and 15 coming up. Justin Brown from Aiden. North Carolina just down the road. Nice play by him. Hands up in the air. Tried to get they faked a screen, slow screen left. Went to the tunnel screen to the right, and Brown right there to swat it away. Then he rolls right, steps into that throw. Beautiful pass, and the catch is made by Jalen Samuels. And it's a first down to the 25-yard line, and the money back comes through again for the Wolfpack. Gain of 16. Boy, not, not often do I, I get really impressed by, you know, a play call. But this is not only a bold play call. They move the pocket. They get Finley outside the box just a little bit, and then he just throws a dart 
to Jalen Samuels. That's, that's just a great throw and catch. Coming up to three and a half minutes remaining in this game. Finley time over the middle. It is almost intercepted. It went through the hands of the receiver, Lewis, and almost wound up into Sean Benton's miss. Second and ten coming up. Yep, tip balls are awfully dangerous. Benton almost makes the play on this one. Finley, see him, he just tries to get a little something down the middle. And uh, Stefan Lewis, who had a brilliant first half, unable to come down with the catch there. Underneath, cut down immediately. That'll be a loss on the play. Samuels was brought down right away by Bowden. So here comes third down and 13 with 313 and counting. Yeah, and Dave, I think I think you're in two downs to get this first down. I, I think they have to. You do have all your timeouts though. It, yeah, if you punt. Yeah, you, you do, but you know you have no guarantee. ECU's done a great job in the second half rotating their quarterbacks in, and when Summers gets the ball and is running, you don't have much of a chance. Finley, long throw, dropped, incomplete. It hit Samuels in the hand, but he had company on that play. He was well covered by Pat Green. It'll be fourth down and 13, and the Wolfpack will send out the punt team. Yep, and, and had Jalen Samuels caught the ball, it would have been about a fourth and three. I think they would have gone for it, I do. The fact he dropped the ball, you have to punt it away here. You still got three timeouts, 2.45 left, but then just a crucial drop. Quay Johnson around the 40-yard line awaiting the A.J. Cole punt. This is high. Wow, that he nailed this. What a tremendous kick by Cole, and what miserable field position for the Pirates. That kick inside the 20-yard line, but right now, the team that controls the ball controls the game, and that's East Carolina. In Death Valley, guys, back to you. Like a thing that had And Brendan, it's very close here in Greenville as the home team leads 33 to 30. East Carolina from the American Conference, and of course from the ACC, the Wolfpack of NC State, about an hour and a half away from here, and a lot of Raleigh faithful have shown up. But this is a purple and gold stadium right now. Nelson, the quarterback, Scotty Montgomery, just his second game as the head coach here at ECU, and Nelson's going to come out pitching. Catch is made by Jimmy Williams, and Williams got popped, but he hangs out of the football, and that's a pretty good gain on first down out to the 22-23 yard line. Tocho on the stop. That was a bit of a bold call. I got to think most everybody's expecting a run. Yeah, Tocho, and then and then Sean Boone, the free safety again, really going after the football that time, and almost jarred it out of Williams's hands. And the Pirates with the advantage here, 33-30. Two timeouts remaining for the Wolfpack. Second down four. To the ground, Anderson made the first miss, made the second miss, and fights for a first down. NC State had a couple of cracks at him and couldn't bring him down. Well, and I think that's all Devin Anderson, too. He makes two guys miss in the backfield. They had him corralled. Hey, what Anderson's had a good second half. We haven't yeah. seen as much Anthony Scott since he was shaken up and has he's played a little bit, but Anderson with six carries and 45 yards. Yeah. And the clock runs here, Tom. It'll be under two minutes before this play gets going. Yep, taking a lot of time, being deliberate with the play call and let the play clock run down. Up the gut. And I think we're going to time out here. We do. Short game there. Second long coming up. Clock stop. 147. The pack with one time out. Quay Johnson is, I think, 13 catches today. They go to the ground. And the pack is waiting. No gain. And we'll see if we get that last Wolfpack timeout. And they are out of timeouts with a minute and 41 to go. It'll be third down. And I think they marked this for a loss. So it's going to be third and 10. Do you yeah. pitch it here, uh, Tom, or uh, keep it on the ground? Dave, I think you got to keep it on the ground. I, I don't think you can risk throwing the ball and have it fall incomplete because it really plays into North Carolina State's hands. And, and 
However, you know, some of their throws have been as safe as runs uh, today. So it wouldn't surprise me. But you got Devin Anderson next to you. He gets it. And they'll be brought down short. It'll be fourth down to the 35-yard line. So they're now 7 of 17 on third down, 2 out of 3 in this quarter, the Pirates. But now they can take your time on this punt. Yep, they'll let the play clock run down inside of, I'm sure, four seconds before they get it snapped. And they even could take a timeout they, themselves to avoid the penalty. They, they can take a timeout. They can even take a delay a game, but you'd probably no. kick it with just maybe four seconds left on the play clock. It's going down from 15 right now. And hopefully you get a good punt off. Now, Braylon Cherry have it in him to make a spectacular run back for NC State. Haven't really seen him cut loose on a punt return here. The Wolfpack bring the pressure. Kick is quick. Low line drive. Cherry, 35 yard line. And he's brought down immediately. Great coverage. That was Chris Love dishing out the pain. Well, two, because two, after all, two Love things, hurts. Two, two, <laughs> but um, bum, that was good. <laughs> two things happened there. Short punt, but I love the fact that Braylon Cherry caught the ball, didn't let it hit the ground. So they get good field position, 38 yard line. They're in hurry up right now. Take a look at numbers on Ryan Finley. Second half, he's been pretty darn effective as well. Not near as many yards. And he's got very talented wideouts, but you got to get a couple big chunks. And remember, they need three points to tie the game. Drops it off to Days underneath, and man, he caught it, but you could just see Corey Sargent running up and anticipating the play, and he is, has to come out of the game. He sacrificed his body on that play. No huddle here for NC State, second down and eight. Under 30 seconds as Finley throws. Long catch. Is he in bounds? Looks like it. And now it's rolling. Underneath, wide open, too high for days. Clock will stop with 13 seconds to go. It's second and 10. Well, the, the way they operate, Dave, you got two plays maximum. They just they, they don't get in and out of the line of scrimmage. On, on and off the line of scrimmage fast enough. You're not going to huddle. You're going to play it at the line of scrimmage. But you got to get a big, big chunk here. And then you got to bring a field goal unit out that's missed two field goals today. Tom, Connor Haskins hasn't had seconds. an effective day. And there's going to need probably 15, 16 more yards and perfect execution. Yep. It's going to be very hard to get a field goal here. Finley in trouble. Goes underneath. Days drops it. Tried to make the one-handed catch. Third down. Eight seconds remaining. Boy, the ECU defense really stepped up. They've caused some problems for that North Carolina State offense. Tom, do you have time to go to the end? Do you have time for play, then go to the end zone, or do you have to go to the end zone right now? Well, I, I think you have to try to get a first down and get out of bounds, and then you line up and you try to kick a field goal. Let's we'll see if there's time for all of that. Finley, ECU stunts. Finley throws, middle of the field, caught by Lewis. He's in field goal range. Lewis to the 25-24 yard line. The clock has run out. Let's see if the officials call this game or not. I believe this game is over. Let's find out, though. The headlinesmen, I, I, I think they're going to have to review the clock here because both the headlinesmen and the center judge, they want to talk this over to make sure that he wasn't down with one second remaining. The referee has not announced this game is over yet. We've got handshakes going on. The officials are jogging off the field. Yeah, I saw the referee motion as though the game was over. He pointed to the clock and waved him off. No announcement made, but... No, but you know what? When you leave the field, this game is over. Yep. And East Carolina and Scotty Montgomery's second game as the head coach has pulled off the win over their rivals from Morale, 33-30. Well, quite the, quite the finish for East Carolina and Scotty Montgomery, who's awfully happy in the middle of the field, as he should be.
Uh, he's run over to the student section and was getting them excited. Not that they weren't already, mind you, and not that the entire city of Greensville and East Carolina fans across the country aren't thrilled about what happened here. We had nearly a thousand total yards in this game today, over 900 for sure, with six lead changes. We will be back with more from Greenville, but first we're going to send you back to Brendan Fitzgerald and Kevin Carter in our studio. Brendan?